Hey everyone, I am going to show you how I finished this cute little design that was in the Christmas winter issue of Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine 2020. So what I did is I, I have a collection of antique books. Whenever I go antiquing, one of the things I consistently look for is antique books. I pay between like five and under is my sweet spot. If I need a specific color or a larger size or, you know, something specific, like maybe I need a larger size or a smaller size or a specific color, then I will pay, you know, probably nine, I think is the most I've ever paid, but that's very seldom. The best thing to do is just constantly be collecting them and that way you're kind of assured to have what you need when you go to finish. This is kind of an odd color that I really never thought I, would, I thought I would use. It's just a little bit bright. I'm I like more primitive colors. However, this design it just really works with this design. The uh Yeah, the colors in this Perfect. So I was really glad to have, you know, that's what I'm saying though. Just get all the colors <laughs> because you never know when you might need something a little off from your norm. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to adhere my cross stitch piece to sticky board. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to measure. And I don't want much like I really don't want linen showing I am going to use a trim on this which I have to run up to the house and iron I really need to buy an iron for down here at the studio but this is uh, Lady Dot creates birds or bird nest okay it's a uh, hand dyed rickrack from Lois and I want to use this because it matches the deer really well and this hump, you know, the rickrack kind of mimics the penny design in the border. And I just think it would be a nice, it would look nice on this color. Okay. So I don't want any of the linen to be showing. So I'm going to have to measure this just right. I always try to have a piece of paper and a pen nearby. So we have... All right, seven inches it is. I bet you this is going to be five. Seven eighths. Four and seven eighths. Let me double check the seven inch on the top and the bottom. Now look, that's weird. This one is seven and one eighths. In here, it's exactly seven. I'm going to go with the seven and one eighths inch because like I said if you go with the bigger size you're going to be able to stretch the shorter side to match okay now I know people use cutting boards I have well not a cutting board what do you call a cutting board um a guillotine cutter I have a couple really expensive Zacto guillotine cutters that we use to cut our covers for our patterns but I find that no matter what, it, they always move. If I And I want perfectly straight corners, so I'm just gonna use my ruler and an X-Acto knife, which I don't have here, so I'm gonna go grab that right now. All right, so let's see what we got here. All right, I can use this piece over here, which is good. It's all dented. Now there's a spot that's dented, so I don't want to use that piece. So it's, let's see, I'm going to cut two and a half inches off at this end. I'm going to go ahead and draw it on there. All right, now I'm going to go seven and one eighth inch from that line. I'm 
then I have to trim it to four and seven eighths. This is the cut edge here from when I purchased this um, sheet. So I'm going to use that edge just because I know it's going to be perfectly straight. So what did I say? Four and seven eighths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. All right, now I have cutting mats like the quilters use, those green that have the measurements on them. So I'm gonna go and cut this piece on that. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I have my piece here and what I use to line up over my stick, on my sticky board is I use this light need to plug this in real quick like a bunny. Okay, so I'm going to take this part off the sticky board. What I do is I just use a, something sharp, my little knife there to get that off. Maybe. Jeepers. There we go. Okay. Now, it was at the top, so I'm going to do this upside down because at the top was where it was the biggest, so I know I want to line that up at the top. So I know I want to go right to the edge, and the light, having the light shine through below really can help you get it lined up perfectly. And as I'm getting that lined up perfectly, I'm pushing it down a little bit. Not super hard, because I might have to adjust it a little bit. All right, now what I like to do is take a piece of paper or even take this piece that we peeled off. And when I want to press it all the way down, then I use this, so I'm not using my my fingers might have you know oils and stuff on them. So I just do it like this. That's what I like about sticky board is that when you press your design, your finished piece on there, it gets rid of any of those wrinkles. I mean I did iron it first, but um, it just helps. Oh, it's so cute! <laughs> I love it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim the edges off because I just wanna have a little bit coming over the side. So I'm gonna trim it so there's maybe a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Gotta grab my scissors. I don't need my light anymore. There you have it. So I'm going to start gluing the back of the linen to the back of the sticky board. So I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch every little movement. Okay, so as you can see, I have white showing around the entire thing. That was not my intention. So what you can do instead of doing having that white show 
you can cut your sticky board a little bit smaller so that this burgundy wraps around the sticky board if you don't want any of the linen showing around the edge. Um, I'm going to have to find a solution. I'm going to have to use trim because I do not like the white linen showing. I should have cut it smaller, the sticky board smaller. I mean, my intention was to use trim anyways, but the rickrack wouldn't have even hit that. So uh, back to the drawing board, I am going to find some sort of trim that will help hide those edges. All right, I'm back. I have a solution. And if you are familiar with any of my punch needle finishing tutorials, you know that when I fold the weaver's cloth back to the back of the punch needle, you guys, I've shared this forever, <laughs> that I use a, a black Sharpie marker or a, or a marker that has a close enough color to the last row of punch needle. So I think I'm going to put this black, it's called licorice, Lady Dot Creates Mini Pom Pom. I'm gonna put this on here, but it's there's still a possibility that that white could show, that light color linen. So I'm doing what I do on all my punch needle finishes, and I'm coloring that linen with a black permanent marker. It being very careful not to get it on those burgundy beautiful stitches that Jerry did, okay? That will just ensure that when I put the pom-pom on, none of that's, that white is gonna show. I don't think I've ever done this on a cross stitch piece. Like I said, it's, it's something I've done on my punch needle forever, but this is extenuating circumstances and I don't want that stinking blinking white linen to show. I mean, I could color that black and then adhere and it would look good. I don't even need the pom-pom at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and just go around all the edges and do color the linen black. And then I'll make the, the call if I'm going to use a pom-pom or not. Um, we'll see. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and do the Lady Dot Creates trim. Um, I've painted, or I've painted, I've used my black marker and colored around the edges. So it does look much better. I mean, it doesn't need the trim necessarily, but it really does help to finish it off nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. Now with Lady Dot Creates trim, um, There tends to be one side that the the pom-poms kind of roll back up on this flat part. Does that make any sense at all? Um, I, but either way you put it on, yeah, hers, hers tends to roll either way pretty good. So I'm um, just gonna cut that last little pom-pom off. It was coming unraveled. So. I'm going to start in the middle on the side here. And what I'm gonna do is just put a little bead. I'm gonna work at fairly small sections at a time so that my glue doesn't start to set up before I get the pom-poms on. Because I got my air conditioning cranking. So <laughs> this is gonna cool quickly. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Just putting that bead of glue. And then I'm laying my pom-pom on and then pushing. I think I need to zoom in for y'all. Let me do that. I don't know that you can see it good enough, so. Let's zoom in. I think I need to move my camera forward too. <sighs> oh, 
Okay. Boy, that is zoomed in good. Just don't look at my fingernails. They're a hot mess. Now I gotta keep looking up to make sure I'm in the shot here. Okay. All right. So I'm just putting a bead of glue, hot glue here. And what I wanna do is I want, I don't wanna get that on my pom-pom. So I'm laying my pom-pom at the edge there Whoa. And then pushing. It's really hard to explain, and I think I'm too zoomed in because now you can't. I think it's too close. All right, let's try that again. Because I can't look at what I'm doing and look to see if you guys can see in the camera, so this is not easy to do. All those little strings, I have a secret of how to get rid of those. It's not a secret. I've told it before. And I'm probably not the only one that knows how to do it, so it's definitely not a secret. Alright. Let's try this again. Hopefully you'll be able to see better this time. And I like to work, like I said, in small sections so that I don't... It doesn't start to cool. If my glue starts to cool, it won't, it won't work. Okay. Now I take my pom-pom and I just lay it right into that glue, making sure that the pom-poms are in the front. Can you see that? So basically where what's getting glued is this part of the pom-pom. There's like a little lace that is attached to the pom-pom. That's what's getting glued down. And I know, there's like all these strings, but not to worry, I, I know how to get rid of those. Okay, let's do some more. I'm trying to be careful not to get the glue on the pom-pom part of it because I want it just to be on the back. What is going on there? Oh my lord, I hope you can see this. So see how good it looks in the front? It's kind of a hot mess in the back a little bit. There's a little bit of glue here, but I can use a heat tool and I can get rid of that. And then on the back, this lace part is what's getting glued down. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit because I think it's harder to see when I'm super close.
Okay. I got it. <coughs> Excuse me. I have it on there. So what I do is I'm going to go, <clears throat> I have a heat gun somewhere else in my studio. Anyways, I'm going to go over there and use the heat gun to get rid of any of these little stringy things left of the glue. And then I'm going to attach that. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad now. So, whoops, so glad now that I did the black mini pom-pom because -pom it really makes it look amazing. So let me go do that and then I'm just going to glue this to the book and we'll be done. Okay, so this book, let me get rid of all the little strings on my paper. This says, Reading with Phonics by Hey Wingo. Hey Wingo, that's funny with the clown. <laughs> Anyways, we are going to attach it to this book with hot glue. And we want to make sure that it's centered. So basically you're gonna look at the top of my head once I get the back of this glued and I go to stick it on, I'm gonna do this so that I can look directly over top. Actually, I'm probably gonna use the cover the countertop behind me because it's a lot lower and I will be able to see way better. Okay, so, oh, I love the color of this book. It's perfect for this piece. So I'm going to have my book behind me on the countertop. Then I'm going to get this piece of paper. Just you want your surface to be clean so you don't get any glue or anything on your piece. And then, hopefully I have enough of this. If I don't, I've got one ready right here. So I want the corners, obviously, to stick down. You don't want to get too close and have it ooze out. Again, working fairly quickly. I'm just trying to get nice, whoops, there we go, coverage. My stinking glue running out. There we go. All right. Ta-da! We are done. Isn't it precious? I love it. I love it. Thanks for bearing with me. Bearing with me? I don't know if that's the right word. Thank you for sticking with me and staying with me as I muddle and fuddle through <laughs> my finishing. Um, yeah, it went just like people that take my painting classes. I like I don't paint the project and then teach it. I paint it on the fly. And so it's it's good because it shows the students and by finishing on the fly, it shows you the decision making process of, you know, oh, that's not going to work, so I'm going to try this or you know, problem solving. So I actually think that that's good to show that part of it even though you can see my frustration. <laughs> It's all good. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope that you stitch this piece and find a cool book so that you can finish it the way I did. Bye. Peace out.